I watched The Devil Wears Prada a few days ago. <laughs> Maybe I should run and watch the whole thing. My mom loves that movie. Yeah, it's Meryl Streep's great in it. There's lots of good qualities in the movie. It's not perfect. But I watched the gag reel of that. And you know who does a gag reel really, really well? Meryl, Meryl Streep. Streep. Who just knows how to do a take to the camera. So you're saying Meryl Streep is a good performer. Meryl Streep messes up better than anyone in the business. <laughs> Unboxing time, my friend. Now? Yes. Unboxing time it is. Yes. Craig, would you like to do some unboxing? Yes. Well, it's a good thing that we're here now on the Unboxing Show, where we thank our donors, people who go to welcometothebasementshow.com and generously donate to support our show, and people who send us things in the mail via our P.O. box. That Poe box? It's a box of riches. It is. It's not a Poe box at all. We're going to open our mail, but first I'm going to thank our donors. Sonny, who says, hello, humans. Thank you for this great show. Sonny called us humans. Maybe Sonny's from the actual sun, <laughs> where the non-humans live. Robert, Rebecca, Danielle, Jonathan, Sarah, Joe, Emily, Sean, Stefan, Benjamin, Samuel, who says greetings from Fargo. Patrick, Jared, Bet, Malcolm, James, Brandon, Luke, Dan, and Chelsea, who says you guys are my favorite show ever. That is saying something. Screw you, Twin Peaks. Let's take a look at our postcards. We don't have many this week. No, we don't. This is from Brian. Greetings from Mexico. And he says, I'm a long-time watcher, first-time writer. I want to congratulate you both on this excellent series and send you some good wishes. Hey, thanks. Gracias. And this is from our buddy Andrew, who writes Quantum Leap. <laughs> <laughs> There's an answer. Oh, the kitty says no. No. Finally, we've answered the question. Quantum Leap? No. We only had two postcards, but I sense maybe we have some more. Because this is a package from San Marcos, California. Really? And Vincent. That's where postcards are born. This isn't a postcard. Cool. <laughs> New York Police Department badge. Hey, postcards from New York. Oddly enough, we got a picture of a, of a Jesus house. Uh, Some place in uh, Rouen. Somewhere in New York, there's a policeman walking around saying, Who took my patch? <laughs> now it's time for questions. You send us questions, and we answer some of them. Joyce Padua writes, I was wondering if you have any recommendations for films based on plays. I'm a first-year theater major, so I'm always curious about how the stage takes the screen. Two favorites are Vani on 42nd Street, also the two versions of Henry V. Vastly different, and if you want to see the stage translated into the screen, both of them do it extraordinarily. Elder Grown writes, Have you put Ernesto on a diet? He looks less fat. A fat kitty is a happy kitty. Yes, that is true, but unfortunately a fat kitty often turns into a diabetic kitty, which is what has happened. We've been treating him with insulin, and he's been responding to it, but that is part of the reason for his weight loss. The bad reason, the good reason, is because we've switched him to a uh, grain-free diet, and he's got this maniac named Cecil who's chasing him around the house all day. So uh, that's how he's shed the pounds. So Cecil to Ernesto is what Cato is to Clouseau. That's right. Yes. Cecil himself is starting to get a little fat. You can't tell. He's black. It's very slimming. Now I'm working on another big deal tonight. A big deal on Madonna Street, see? Marcello Mastriani will be there. <laughs> There's uh, Jerry Orbach on the couch there. <laughs> you once had a great nose for finding new talent. And truffles. Great nose for truffles. You used to be a big man. You don't like to be small potatoes. I'd like to be a nice fingerling potato. Those are delightful. That guy looks like a half-blown-up balloon. <laughs> can you tell me where I can find 341? 341? Second brand still, ma'am. Thanks, Sonny. Gee, ma'am, I sure am aroused, even though it's way before my puberty times. I wouldn't figure you as... Domestic. I would have figured you as imported, one of those Euro trash broads. <laughs> you should see me in the morning without makeup. I'm merely gorgeous. Oh my god, these nerds are gonna get killed after the show. <laughs> They're gonna get beaten up so badly. <laughs> Tom is unwinding with a few more drinks. So let's see, we've got Kahlua, Drambui, Frangelico, and Creme de Cassis. She's the 
But do you mean maybe? Okay, okay. Tie them loose! The most dangerous game right now? Yeah, he has a history of shooting people. Want a tour of his killing? This is where he got blasted. Right through the hat band. Let's see, uh... That makes 13, don't it? And all those happened during Michael Corleone's son's christening. I'm on your feet, Miller! Fats, listen. It isn't what you think. I'm in a barbershop quartet. That's why I'm dressed <laughs> like this. Oh, no, you never, never know. You'll never know. It's true, you'll never know. You'll go to your grave never knowing. <laughs> oh, it'll make you feel better. What's in it? It's mostly made out of radium. It's the 50s. We can do that. Bottle that recipe, you'll make a fortune. <laughs> I hope you like egg souffle. Bottle it. You got another fortune. <laughs> you like how I fry fried chicken? Delicious. <laughs> bottle it. I thought you were going to say I should bottle it. Yesterday you wanted me to bottle everything. Okay, bottle it. <laughs> I'm returning to my ocean home to see my father, Poseidon. A lot of times people ask me on comments, hey, do you actually listen to those records that people send you? Well, I do, and I'm going to talk about some of them right now. I don't recall the names of all the people who sent these, but you know who you are, and thank you once again. First up, we have the House Martins. I'd never heard this band before, and they're pretty good. They sound a lot like Squeeze. Oh, well, you like Squeeze. This is one that you and I listened to together quite a while ago, and that is Radio Ready Wisconsin, the local power pop collection. Butch Vig's band is on here. And was, was that Firehouse or a, what? Spooner? Oh yeah, Spooner, yeah. It's uh, some good quality stuff. And lastly, we've got Of Montreal, Lousy with Sylvia and Briar. This is great. I'm a fan of, of Montreal. Their music has been getting increasingly stranger and stranger and more intense. And in this one, he kind of takes a step back. He uh, hired session musicians, and it's just more of a, an organic experience. And um, it's, it's kind of a more song-based album than weirdness-based. Yes. When you say him, do you, do you know the guy's name? It's Kevin something. Kevin Barnes. And now, the Zatoichi Report. My quest to watch all 25 Zatoichi sequels in 2016 continues. This week I had my work cut out for me because the 20th in the series is Zatoichi meets Yojimbo. Ooh. And so, I had to watch Yojimbo. Oh. A movie that I thought I had seen already, but it turns out I hadn't. You're very, very lucky. I love that movie. Toshiro is known for doing very over-the-top performances. You see him in Seven Samurai, you see him in Rashomon, he's always like, Rawr! He does Restrained very well. Mm -hmm. He's almost unrecognizable as this character. He still has a lot of, like, the tics and affectations. Oh, sure. Like, he's, yeah. like, walking around like a mangy dog, scratching himself all the time. I like the intrigue, I like the politics. It's more compelling than a lot of the Zatoichi movies where that are plot-driven. And I really like the jazzy score. He doesn't appear in the Zatoichi movie, does he? Yes, he does. He does. Yes, he plays the character that he played in Yojimbo. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know. I thought they just had someone else. In this 20th film in the series, Zatoichi is tired of all the killing, and he yearns for simpler times, so he goes back to his hometown, a place of plum blossoms and creepy stone statues. But when he gets back there, he finds that the town has changed. A lot of similarities between this and Yojimbo. A town beset by gangsters and looking for a hero to save it, and the hero is very dubious in their heroism. It's actually a really good entry in the series. It seems to depart from the Zatoichi formula the most of all the films I've seen. Well, watching Yojimbo inspired me to do a little bit of writing. This is called Tossing a Stick into the Air. At a crossroads, the thrown stick lands, points a direction, and Sanjuro follows its lead into this place of skulls, this doomed town of gamblers, drifters, leering faces, evil mouths, greedy eyes. Hungry dogs come running when they smell blood, with the limbs of dead men in their mouths. The rice is cold, the sake is bitter. The casket maker's mallet pounds out a dark rhythm. I like it here. The petty treacheries, the tedious brains of old fools, the dead bodies, are so many coins falling from the sky. Even a stick holds wisdom. Let's open them boxes. All right, I'll give you the flat one. I'm going to take this one. What's in this? Okay, I have a record here. It is from the Wizard of Menlo Park himself, Thomas Alva Epley. And it is Wild Billy Childish and... <coughs> and it is Wild Billy Childish and CTMF Acorn Man. What the hell is that? 
I don't know, but I'm looking forward to listening to it. This is from Matt in England. PG tips. Pyramid bags. Oh, this is tea, I believe. Oh, okay. It seems very English, yes. And tea cakes. I'm. There's a theme. Toffee crisps and lion peanuts. Oh, oh man. My diet's going to go all to hell. Yeah, that's right. Twiglets. Oh, Twiglets. That's a big... Twiglets, yeah. That's, that's a big-time English thing. Yeah. Curly Whirlies. They have very fun <laughs> names for candies over there. This is a box of snacks. Oh, and Simmons Pork Scratchings. <laughs> is this how the British people say pork rinds? We are going to get messed up on British food tonight. Would you like to have a tea cake with me? I would love to have a tea cake with you. Cheers. Cheers. To Matt. The other man, not this guy. Mmm. No, oh, it's like a Malamar. Cooking mm. with a marshmallow? Yeah. Tally ho. Not what I expected. It's even better. Well, as we tuck into our snacks, we bid you a fond farewell as the unboxing show is now concluded. You can tune into the new episode of Welcome to the Basement this coming Friday. Chin chin. Tom is unwinding with a few more drinks. So let's see, we've got Kahlua, Drambuie. Frangelico and creme de cassis. All those young couples dance to the rock and roll. They're probably thinking about causing crime. You know, you can also watch this opening to the uh, Peanuts theme song. I'll beat it before she shows. But boy! Oh, she's giving him the ague.